Hi, this is 8.1, uh, Systems of Linear Equations, and uh, basically this is a section, it's fairly easy, uh, you just if you can picture lines crossing or not, uh, you, you're pretty good at this section, I believe. Uh, but there's like three situations when you put the two pairs of uh, pair lines on the same Cartesian plane. They're either going to cross at a point, or they're not going to cross at all, because they're parallel, and there's another case in they are actually laying right on top of each other. So these are the three cases that you're going to have. Now, most of the ones that you're going to see are going to be two lines that are separate and they're going to cross at one point. Most of them will have this answer. And when they do, it's said to be consistent and they're independent, which basically means they consistent because it has a solution and it's independent because there's two separate equations. They're independent of each other, okay? Now, there is another uh, uh, situation when they're parallel, which means they don't cross, and that means they don't have a common solution. And that's what they are said to be inconsistent at that point. Okay. Now, there is another situation that happens ever so often, but the two lines in question so happen to be the same line. And when you graph them, they actually lay on top of each other. And that was one they called coincident, okay? uh, also known as identical. They're the, they're the same, same line. And when that happens, of course, they're going to be consistent because they have all the solutions that they, each one of them has. And we'll show how to write that, hopefully, in a minute. And then they are actually dependent because one depends on the other. So they're the same thing. So they're dependent on each other. But anyway, these are the three situations. Okay. Now, uh, over the years, there's many ways to solve these types of equations. Um, there's actually four techniques that I've got listed here. Uh, the top two are re what we're going to use. Um, the other two are in other sections in this book, actually, that we're not covering. So we just don't have time for that. So we're going to use the substitution and the elimination method. And I got four examples, and I got two. I'm going to show you how to do by substitution, and I got two of them that I'm going to show you by the elimination. Okay? And hopefully it's going to be one of these situations here. So, all right, so let's look at example one solving my substitution. So this is a line and this is a line. So they might cross, they might not, and it might be the same line. And we're going to see what happens in, in each case. So uh, if they cross at a single point, it's going to be quite obvious that's what, what's happening. So let's look at example one. Now, when you solve by substitution, this is how you do it. You take one of the variables, and it doesn't matter which one, and you solve for that letter. So you can solve for this x, this y, this x, or this y, and it doesn't matter. When you do that, Take that expression and put it into the second equation that you didn't use in the first place. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to solve for this y right here. It's just simply because there's no number in front of it, so it's easy to solve for. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this one over here, and I'm going to move this y over here. So this becomes 2x plus 1 equals y. So I just played musical chairs with these two terms. So y is the same thing as 2x plus 1. Now I'm going to substitute 2x plus 1 in for the y of the second equation. So I haven't touched this equation yet, but now I am. I'm going to take the 2x plus 1, and I'm going to put it in for that y right there. And then what comes up is an equation that involves only x's. And I can solve for that. So 4x plus 3y equals 13. And then I'm going to take 2x plus 1, and I'm going to put it in there. Now what's going to happen is, it's going to give me an x value, x equals some number. Hopefully, if it doesn't, if it gives me an expression that cannot be true, then you say it's no solution, which means it would be inconsistent. If you get something that is always true, you would say it's the same line. So you're like, well, how's that going to happen? Well, because if your x's cancel out, and sometimes that work, it does that way, the x's will cancel out, and then you get like 5 equal to 5. And that's always true, and that means it's going to be one of these. But you might get something when the x's cancel out, something like 7 equals 3. And that's never true. And that's when you got parallel lines. But I think, in this case, I will get an answer. And I'll get an x value. So if I multiply by 3, I get 6x plus 3 equals 13. 4x plus 6x is 10x plus 3. So it's just a simple linear equation. And I keep this up, and I think 10x equals 20, uh, 10x equals 
10, and then x turns out to be 1. Now that's not the answer. That just tells me what the x value of the ordered pair. So now to find out the answer, I've got to put 1 back in to this equation right here, and that will tell me what the y value that turns out to be. So y is equals to 2x plus 1, so you plug the 1 back in, and you get y equals 3. 2 times 1 plus 1 is 3, I believe. So the answer is the ordered pair 1, 3. So what that tells me is that these two lines, they do their own thing, but they hit, they intersect at the ordered pair 1, 3. So that is a common solution. So when you're solving a system, you're finding the common solution. Because remember what graphs are. Graphs are just lines, uh, in this case lines, but they're solutions to a particular equation. So this 2x minus y equals negative 1 has an infinite number of solutions. So does this one. But what we're trying to do is find out the ones that they have in common. Well, in this case, there's only one. So 1 comma 3 should work for both these equations, and you can check it to see. Uh, 2 times 1 is 2. 2 minus 3 is negative 1. It checks out for that one. Now look at the other one. 1, 3. 4 times 1 is 4. 3 times 3 is 9. 4 plus 9 is 13. But that is the only ordered pair that works for both. Now you'll find some that works for this one other than 1, 3. And you'll find some that's, that works for this one other than 1, 3. But that's the only one that works for both of them. So that's what, that's what solving for a system is all about. Finding the one that finding the ordered pair or ordered pairs that work for both. So one three is the solution to this system. Now this one right here, we're going to solve this one by substitution. So I'm going to take a variable, and it doesn't matter which one I'm going to use. Well, since I solve for y this time, let's solve for x. And you're like, well, which one would you solve for? Well, it really doesn't matter because there's coefficients from everything. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick the two x right here and solve for this x right here. Sometimes you don't have much choice if you're going to do it by substitution. So, so 2x minus 3y equals 6. You get 2x equals 3y plus, uh, plus 6 because I added 3y to the other side. And then divide by 2. So x equals 3y plus 6 divided by 2. So this is the substitution method. Elimination method actually would have been easier here, but I chose to do it by substitution. So x equals 3y plus 6 divided by 2. So I take the other equation, 4x minus 6y equals 11, and I place this into the x slot. And I do the same thing I did in my previous example. I work it out and try to isolate the x. So I get 4 times 3y plus 6 divided by 2 minus 6y equals 11. All right? So then I get... These cancel, that's 2 times, and so it would be 6y plus 12, 2 times 3y is 6y, 2 times 6 is 12, minus 6y equals 11. Remember what I warned you about a while ago? Sometimes the y's cancel out, the variables cancel out, they do. The 6y's cancel out. So you get a statement that says 12 equals 11, and that is never true. So in the previous example, I was able to isolate a variable. This time, it canceled out. And this scares the dickens out of people. So they see this 12 equals 11, they think they've done something wrong. But in reality, you've just got this situation right here going on. You've got two parallel lines. Because you don't, get an, you don't get an answer because there is no intersection point. So if this, But if this turned out to be 12 equals to 12 instead of 12 equals 11, that would always be true. So what do you think happens in that case? Yeah, it would be this one. They, they always the same. It's the same line. It would be coincident. Okay? So in this solution, you're like, well, what, what, do you, what do you write down? You write inconsistent. There's no answer. So this one is inconsistent. Two lines that are parallel. Uh, now, understand, I... I could have, some of you guys who have already seen the elimination method, what is that, Gary? That would have been a whole lot easier if you had just done it by the elimination method. I realize that. Uh, sometimes people pick the wrong method. Sometimes you pick one and the other one would have been easier. Okay? Uh, you, got, you really have your own choice in which way you want to do the two techniques unless they tell you specifically to say, do this by the elimination method. Then, of course, you got to do it by that technique. 
but they say do it by the substitution method, do it by that technique. But if they leave it open to you to let you do it either way you want, pick the method of your choice. So, okay. Now, that's substitution. So now let's look at one that you can do it by the elimination method. And some of you guys will, who have done this, like I said, well, elimination method, I prefer that one because it's easier. Because you eliminate something really quick and it's, it's not as much moving things from one side of the equation to another side of the equation, which people are really despise to do. So this way you just kind of keep everything on the same side for the most part. So you're like, what do you do? Well, I'm going to eliminate, well, that's what's called the elimination method, of one of the variables in the equations by adding or subtracting them. Now, as it stands, if I add these equations in the order that they have, nothing is going to get eliminated. But this is, turns out to be like 3x, this turns out to be 2y, and this turns out to be 11. Nothing gets eliminated. But if I multiply everything this equation times 3, you get 3x minus 3y equals 21 on the top equation. You're like, why did you choose to do that? Well, because the bottom equation, if I leave it alone, and then add these equations up, the y's are eliminated. So this becomes 5x, the y's are eliminated, equals 25, 21 plus 4. And then divide by 5, and x equals 5. 25 divided by 5. And so people say, this is a lot faster. Yes, for most people it is. It's just some people like substitution method because it just seems more mechanical to them and that's what they prefer, and that's fine. Now you put 5 back into which one? It doesn't matter. It should give, it should give you the same answer the way you go. Uh, if you put it up here, you get 5 for x minus y equals 7. So if I add the y over here, I get y and 5 minus 7. I think it turned out to be negative 2. And so y is a negative 2, so the answer is 5 comma negative 2. So this equation is consistent, and they're independent of each other because they're just basically two lines going on the plane and they're doing their own little thing, but they do cross at the order pair 5, negative 2. That's the common solution because they're both lines. So, all right, and in example 4, let's do this by the elimination method as well. So let's try to eliminate this. Let's try to eliminate the x's. So if I take the, the, the top equation and multiply it by 2, I get a 10x. And that would be a negative 10x. So if I multiply the top equation times 2, I get 10x. Negative 2 times 2 is negative 4y. And then 6 times 2 is 12. So I got the top equation and multiply it by 2 because I want to eliminate this negative 10x right here but the rest of it's got to come down too. Now let's uncover it. So you get negative 10y plus 4y equals negative 12. And some of you guys are probably saying, yeah, your x's are going to be eliminated, but so does everything else. So, oh, that's actually an x, sorry. Your x's are going to get eliminated, but this one's going to be eliminated, and this one's going to be, so you end up with like 0 plus 0 equals 0. And so 0 does equal 0, and that's always true. And this makes people just as nervous as this one over here does. But they have different answers. This one you ended up with 12 equals 11, which is not true. But this one is always true. So you have the other situation in this case, the coincidence, the two identical equations. And you're like, well, how do you write the answer? Hmm. Well, you, could, you don't want to just say coincident because... It is, all the, it is the ordered pairs, but you don't say an infinite number of solutions either. Because when you say infinite number of solutions, you're saying all the ordered pairs on the plane. And that's not true. It's only the ordered pairs on the line. So the question is, how do you write it and not, not include everything else that's not on the line? You write it as you say it. It is all the ordered pairs on the line. So this is how I would write it. The set of ordered pairs such that one of these equations is true. 5x minus 2y equals 6. People really struggle with that one because they don't do enough of these problems to kind of keep that in their memory. But what it is, it's all the ordered pairs. That line is such that some people don't like the bar. They use the colon. It's the same thing. So all the ordered pairs, x, y, such that 
hey, like, why do you pick that equation? Why don't you pick the other equation? I could have. Because it's the same equation. So, uh, but you don't want to say all real numbers. Because that's kind of misleading to the person who's reading your answer because they're going to think every point on the plane is going to work. And you, it's not every point on the plane. It's just the points on that line. So, and you could, you could verbalize it. You could just say all the water pairs on one of the lines. So, and that would be fine too. It just, it just takes more handwriting for that. So, but anyway, this is 8.1. And for the most part, this is kind of a, you know, kind of nice exit out of the class. We really, of course, we've got 8.6 to do because 8.1 and 8.6 are relatively easy sections. And, uh, but anyway, that's, that is, that is 8.1 concluded. And we got one more section to do, and this course will be done. We'll be doing 8.6 as well.